Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. With the end of the year fast approaching, I've been eager to finish a doll I've been wanting to create for the longest time. Ever since its release in 2014, I've been a huge fan of Patrick McHale's animated miniseries Over the Garden Wall. The series follows two brothers seemingly lost in the world of the unknown, a world rich in themes of Brothers Grimm-like fairy tales and 19th century Americana. It's truly one of the most unique and gripping animations I've seen, and so for today I wanted to create one of the characters from the show. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading all of your comments. The character we'll be creating today will be the older brother, Wirt. For the base, I'll be using some spare parts from my stock box. For the head, I decided to go with a base that I've never used before, which is from a doll line called Fail Fix. This doll was released in 2020, but unfortunately has come to be discontinued. For the body, I have a couple of spare obitsus, which are Japanese bodies for doll customs. While I do have this male obitsu body, I'm leaning more towards the female version. The male body is quite triangular and muscular, which doesn't really fit in with the character design. As Wirt is only 14 and has quite a petite body, the female body would best suit his silhouette. But of course though, I'll give it some modifications. For the modifications, I'm going to re-sculpt the chest by removing the breasts. This doesn't need to be perfect, as it'll be covered by layers of clothes. Let's prepare the head for customising. With some hot water, I'm just going to soak the head for at least 30 seconds. This will loosen the vinyl and allow me to remove the hair plugs and the eyes. With some 100% acetone and a cotton swab, it's time to remove the factory paint. Remove the factory paint. This paint is very strong. Oh my gosh, why isn't it coming off? Okay, this paint is way too strong. It literally only comes off with sanding with a Dremel. But that's okay, I was wanting to do some facial modifications anyway. For the facial modifications, I want to remove the eyelashes and the eye line, create a concave silhouette for eye sockets, and remove the lips in order to build up a new mouth shape. With some Milliput, let's build up a new face. For his face, I'm going to give him a nice high nose bridge, smaller eyes and build up an undefined top lip. Oh, and his lovely ears, of course. While on camera, I spray painted and recolored his head, I did remove all of that again and continued sculpting just a little bit more. It's okay to not get it right the first time. In his second sculpt, I made his eyes even smaller, brought the eyes down a little bit lower, made it so he had no top lip at all and only a partial bottom lip. As well, I sanded everything down so much finer than I did previously. The paint I used for the base is Games Workshop Citadel Wraithbone. Then with a layer of Vallejo 017 basic skin for the base and 020 sunny skin for the contour of the face. Once that's dry, I added a layer of Vallejo gloss varnish, a layer of Vallejo matte varnish, and finally a layer of Mr. Super Clear matte varnish. It's a lot of varnish, I know, but I always find it gives the best finish. Let's start creating the face. The materials I'll be using are my Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, as well as some of my fine tip brushes and some water on hand to make those lines nice and neat. For shadows, I'll be using soft pastels and some eyeshadows. For added definition later on, I'll be using acrylic paint. The brands I'll be using are Vallejo and Scale 75. Thank you. 
Originally, I had actually wanted to make this doll into a stop motion puppet. Inspired by the two stop motion films we've been graced with recently, Wendell and Wilde and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I love the rustic, handmade look of puppets in stop motion and felt it would be perfect for Work's character. I wanted to make the model with fully movable faceplates like they use in stop motion today, but I couldn't figure out the mechanics. Mainly that little mechanic that makes the eyes move. It's a shame, but that's okay. Maybe in the future. Nonetheless, direct inspiration for Wurt's face came from characters like Eggs and Winnie from Box Trolls, as well as Norman from Paranorman, mainly referencing the painting style of the puppeteers, as the characters have amazing isolated colouring used for shading and blushing of their faces, for that perfectly imperfect look. To create the eyes, I first cast resin in 1cm resin eye moulds. I found the iris too big however, so made them smaller with some milliput. Once it is dry, I gave it a colour with some white spray paint, and I can start adding in all the details. While Wirt has just black dot eyes in the cartoon, I wanted to give a little bit more detail to this doll. I think for Wirt, he should have some lovely warm brown eyes. I've been having a lot of fun with insert eyes recently, but I definitely haven't perfected them. No matter how much time I spend on details in the iris, as soon as I add the resin it just dulls it, and you really just can't see any of that work that you've done. Which is disheartening, in a way, um, when you spend so long trying to make it look nice and it's just, it's gone. <laughs> I'll definitely have to do more practice, maybe by watching how people with um, prosthetic eyes have their eyes made. But as well, I think if I start watching that, I'll start collecting those eyes like a goblin. <laughs> Whilst we let the head and the eyes settle, it's time to start on the clothes. Wirt's clothes play an essential role in not only his design, but as well to display his character. Wirt is shown as a person in that awkward stage of life, trying to craft his own identity while being shackled by anxieties, uncertainties, and the general ebb and flow of the teenage world. 
I think this can be shown in the fact that he puts together this outfit from random things he finds around the house and feels proud of it, only for that pride to be extinguished and replaced with anxiety when people somewhat backhandedly question him on why he's dressed like that. Patrick McHale actually said in an interview that Wirt's costume is referenced from a costume he made in his own life, so I feel like it can be symbolically read that way. Let's get started with the cape. Do forgive me, I didn't actually realise this when I was watching the show and of course doing research for this, that I missed a reference and so I made a headcanon instead. Whilst Wirt wears a large blue cape, when I was designing the cape I thought it would be fun to make a doll sized version of a vintage women's cape jumper. With the idea that the cape would have been something that Wirt's mum would have worn, maybe just some old clothes that he found, and he decided to borrow. It would not only make it look nicer, but it would make it look less like a scrap of fabric. Of course, however, being from Australia, I, it didn't register to me that the cape was meant to be a historical item, so I do apologise for that. As well as the cape, I also made a simple button-up shirt and some grey chinos. With some faux leather strips, I'm just going to make some suspenders for his trousers, securing them all together with super glue. I found these metal things at the craft shop. I've no idea what they are, but when I was looking at them and thought of them in doll scale, they work perfect for the clasps of suspenders. For added detail to the coat, I added gold buttons, which in this case are just beads. And for the clasp, I used a gold chain. While here I'm gluing them in place, I did remove them and sewed them all back on for added security. For the hat, I cut out just a triangle from craft foam and with some red fabric, I glued that on top. Around the opening, I created a basic lining For the shoes, I swiped some from a Ken doll that I have and tried to make custom shoes for Wirt by cutting them up and remoulding them to be smaller. Though mistakenly, I thought it would look nice to have material on the shoes so it matched the outfit more. Yeah, it didn't look as nice as I had planned. In all honesty, it looks pretty crappy. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. With a different set of shoes this time, I remodeled them again, but fixed the holes with Millie Putt. Once that was dry, I gave them a paint. To give Wirt some hair, 
I created a wig cap out of craft tape. This is so I can remove the hair later on to attach the eyes and the head cap. For the hair of Wurt, I went with some brushed out acrylic yarn fibres in dark brown, and for some highlights I had a medium brown that I'll add throughout the wig when I'm constructing it. Wurt has short, choppy hair. To make his hair, I'm going to apply some wefts all around the perimeter of the wig. I'm going to work layer by layer. Once each section is cut and styled, I'll add more wefts and just use that as a guide, basically. I find that when doing short hairstyles, it's always so much easier to do it this way, as, as it can feel so overwhelming, <laughs> especially on something so small. Um, it's so hard to make a hairstyle when all the hair is just in your face. It's easier just to kind of do it slowly, step by step. Once the hair is all done, we can start assembling him. To do this, I grab some hot glue and very carefully start adding the eyes in place. Once the eyes are nice and secure, I glued the cap and slid on the wig. And with that, Wurt is done. I'm so happy with how he turned out. He looks like it could come to life at any moment. Thank you so much for watching this little one we made. Let me know what you think of him in the comments below. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to never miss out on a video. A huge thank you as always to my Patreon subscribers. With all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.